And before we started working together, he said to me, I'm here to lead you to Christ. I wasn't saved at the time. So it was kind of a bitter, bittersweet thing. Uh, and I worked in a plainclothes unit. We had a regular car, and you know, regular car like, a, like every, an everyday car. And uh, I would get out of the car, and he would have the gospel music going. I get back in the car, he get out. I turn on rock and roll. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it was a, it was kind of a bittersweet thing in the beginning. But uh, as we begin to to work together, and um, and I was going through some difficult times at the time and he took me to an organization called Cops for Christ and um, and from there it was just me giving my my heart to the Lord and then uh, just God changing my life totally so that was prophetic when he said that to me that I'm here so that you come to the Lord and that's that's how it happened yeah. Yeah. and that took over a 10 year period I'm shortening shortening the, the story but that took over a 10 year period for that to happen and, and between that, uh, I was even transferred to another unit. And, um, and, and like a few months later, he got transferred to the same unit. <laughs> so we, we stayed together for that 10 years. So it was amazing. And, and God really put that together. And that was, uh, that was great. Uh, I want you, before we get started, uh, one of my spiritual sons, and if you were here last night, you heard from the mayor of Ocala. Ben, Benjamin Marciano. Well, well, my other spiritual son, him and, and the mayor, were like this, okay? So I'm going to have him come before you a little bit before we start, just to give you his testimony. Ed Farentino. You may know the name Farentino from this town. Tough to follow the mayor, um, but that's the way God planned it for the day. Hey, Matt, you'll cut, cut me off. Okay. So, um, my story is going to be kind of God saw this day. God saw this day that I got to stand up here before you guys and give my testimony. And this started probably about 20 years ago because. Uh, Pastor Nate was saying that, that he worked for the centers, but it wasn't the centers. It was actually Marion Citrus Mental Health. And uh, I was going through my first rehabilitation, drug rehabilitation at the time. And uh, Pastor Nate was my intake. Did not know at that time what was before me. We'll fast forward about another, I don't know, seven, eight years my second drug rehab. This time it was at the centers, but Pastor Nate was with another church and that church came and they would pick us up and that's actually where, where I met, met Ben. And uh, we would go, he would pray over us. He would tell us, God has great things in store for you guys. You guys have just got to hold on. You have just got to believe. You have just got to get into these principles of the Bible. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. Go to church. He says that to me constantly. Find a church. Get a place. Get planted. Because you have to have people that know you, that believe in you. I've never been perfect. Never. I try. I try and I fail. But God picks me up every single time, no matter what winds up happening. One of the things that was kind of missing from my life, um, and I wasn't ready for it yet, was a wife and a family. I tried to create that on my own before with devastating consequences and uh, did not involve God and, or Jesus in my relationship. So when I met my, my current wife, uh, we decided that marriage counseling was going to be very, very important. We had a blended family. I had two daughters, she had two daughters. Her daughters were 12 and 14. So they weren't needing a dad. 
they weren't needing somebody to come in and discipline. But what they needed was a man that was the head of the house. Okay, They needed somebody that was going to come in and spiritually lead the family. And that's what I had been being prepared for. We sat in marriage counseling and we talked about things that we had no idea about, right? Like money, like my college loans that I had in the rears that were now going to become part of her problems. Things that you don't think about. Things that God already knows and that he needs to have in place for you. So God placed just a wonderful woman in my life and whenever I start to stray, all that she says is, Christ is the center of this marriage. My nephew got married back in uh, November, and uh, one of the things that he said to us was that our marriage was one of the things that he looked at whenever he was looking at the way he wanted to be a father, the way that he wanted to be a husband, the way that he wanted to be a man. I never, ever imagined that that would be the case. Not for me, not for this guy right here. So um, I had it said to me a second time, and that's for a wedding that's happening today. My niece uh, is getting married today, and her soon-to-be husband again said, what's the secret? How do you guys do it? We don't. We just keep Christ in the center. Keep Christ in the center, and that's it. Being the man of the family, being the head of the family, and this is kind of where I'm going to wrap it up, those two young girls, the 12 and 14-year-old, they fought. They didn't like the new man in their lives, but they have now found that as the head of the family, they can rely on me. Both of them as adults have gotten into situations, and they've come home. And they've come home and they said, because we want to learn, we need to find a man that's like this guy right here. Thank you guys very much. Turn myself back. I'm back on, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks, God. Wow. So, uh. You know, God can do anything in a life. All we got to do is surrender to him, you know, and let him, let him take control. You know, we try to control and we try to do what we want to do, but if we release t- uh, our control unto God and let the Holy Spirit begin to start working on our lives, he'll, he'll bring us to where we need to be. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We have a couple of books that we want to give away. And um, let's see, I don't know how we're going to do this, but. This book that Pastor Debbie spoke about, we want to give that one away first. And also in here is a little workbook that goes along with that. So uh, this book is based on Job chapter 37, verse 14, where the Lord tells Job to reset his life. Okay. So um, first hand up. Oh, boy. Wow. (laughs) Okay. Let's see if we can do this differently. Okay. One, two, three. First one up here. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <about that. laughs> Praise the Lord. So Eddie talked about blended families. So this book is, is, is called that. It's Blended Families. It's by uh, Jimmy Evans and Frank Martin. And it, it has a story about, uh, story about uh, 18 blended families and how They all put it together with with God's help. Uh, Any blended families here? Okay. There's a blended family. Right there. Okay, there you go. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so that's good. So we'll get right into uh, our message today. And um, I I had a couple of things on on my heart that I wanted to share. I'm going to do some writing. You can have a seat. And uh, Pastor Debbie, I'll use the darker, i use the darker, the black one this time. There are, there are certain things as Christians that I call them our non-negotiables, okay? Non-negotiables. These things have to be going on in our lives as believers. We can't just get saved, sit in a chair, and expect God to do everything for us, okay? 
we have to have an active part in our, our salvation, okay? So one thing, and, and one of the biggest things that we have going is prayer. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have prayer in, in our relationship with the Lord. He wants to hear from us. And it, it's not a, 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 um, a dialogue, you know, it's monologue between you and him, okay? Not a monologue, it's a dialogue between you and him, okay? And he wants to hear from you. Sometimes when you get to praying, you can pray and just uh, ask, ask the Lord for whatever you, you want to bring to him, supplication, bring that to him, and just sit and listen and hear what the, the Lord has to say to you, okay? So it's not always you talking, Sit, listen, hear the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Okay, I've never heard an audible voice, but I have heard it, an inner voice in here telling me exactly what I'm supposed to do in that situation. So uh, make sure that you just give time to rest and let the Holy Spirit minister to you as well, okay? Not just always you to him, okay? Uh, reading the word. You know, God wants us to mature in the word of God. We're not, we're not to just be stagnant and uh, let the pastor, pastor do everything. You know, get in the word for yourself. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved. So we get in the word and we study the word. And we talked about it last night, I was something I call the gap. And the gap is uh, based on James 1, 22 and 25. Uh, the gap is doing the word, hearing the word, and then being able to do the word. The gap is I just hear the word and I don't do it. That's the gap. Okay? So we've got to, we've got to hear the word, and the, the ultimate goal is to walk that word out in every day in our lives. And there's a lot of distractions. That, that gap is a lot of distractions between hearing it and walking it out. So, and there's some people that, that are just churchgoers. They come, they go to church, they hear the word, they walk out the door, and they go back to living the way they were living before they came in. Church should be a place where you hear the word, get something from it, mature in Christ, and then be able to walk it out in your life. Amen? Yeah. And that brings about change in, in your lives. Okay? It brings about change. So, um, you know, this world has its own pull and lure. And it pulls us back into the things that we, we want to get away from. So we have to have a mindset. And we have to be intentional about growing in the things of God. God wants growth in our lives, okay, maturity. And it comes by reading and studying the word of God. The next is, is uh, fellowship. Well, I know when we were in the world... Uh, I'm going to go back a little bit. When I was in the world, uh, I hung around a lot of, of course, people that weren't saved. That's the people I hung around with. Um, and when we get in Christ, uh, we, we're to, to have that same communication, but we have it with the people who are going the same direction we are. We don't want people pulling us back into the world system. Okay? We want to we get with some people who can encourage us. You know, the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. So we sharpen each other as we're around each other. Uh, we don't have to ever, have to ever worry about, about things, uh, things of the world system because we're both going in the same direction. Okay? So um, make your friends people who love the Lord and who are going in the same direction with you. I know we have to work, we have to work with unsaved people, but in our working with unsaved people, we have to be that light. You know, and, and people have said to me, I remember when I was in the police department, a guy said to me, he said, uh, you know, there's, there's something about you that, uh, that's different. He said, why, what is it? I, I, I said, I went home and I told my wife, there's this, there's this guy I work with, he, he's different. <laughs> so I said, what, he said, what is that about you? And then I had an opportunity to witness to him at that point. So the Holy Spirit will open up doors for you. And when, when those doors open, You've got to be ready to, ready to hit, the, hit, the, hit, the, hit the door when it opens, okay? So fellowship's important. 
church attendance. Church attendance. Okay. Church, att <laughs> church attendance is the place where you get filled. Okay. You come and you hear the word of God. And uh, we talked about last night that um, uh, I think the, st the last study that we looked at said that within 24 hours, you, you lose 50% of what you heard. Okay. And I think I asked it, were there any note takers? in church last night and I don't know I, I didn't look I remember this what, what response we got but taking good notes are good and it, it uh, the that increases if you take notes and you go back over them again that time increases it stays with you longer okay um, and now we 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 can put our, our messages on uh, YouTube and various different uh, social media platforms so go back on that social media platform and hear I know me when I hear a word sometimes I'll hear a good word if I go back over it two and three times I, I hear something different that I miss the first time that I heard it okay so the, the more times that you go over it and go over it uh, as many times you get more out of the message and the message will begin to start resonate in your heart and then you'll, you'll be able to walk it out then so church is that place where we, we, have to, uh, we have to get fed. Okay, and I, I say, I'm going to say tithing. Amen. You know, um, you know there's, a, there's, a, there's a, lot of, a lot of controversy about tithing. I don't find it a controversy in my life. You know, I mean, um, when I was in the world, I, I supported a whole bunch of worldly stuff. You know, I come in, throw my throw fifty dollars on the bar, and uh, buy drinks for everybody in the house. You know, and I think nothing of it. But why why would I not, not be so tight now in church that I can't do the same thing for for the Lord? Okay, so tithing and tithing keeps keeps God's house fresh. This is a beautiful beautiful uh, edifice here. You should have seen this place when we walked in it. It didn't look like this. That's for sure. But because we, uh, we had good tithing members who, uh, who helped the church out, we have a, this beautiful edifice now that we can come to and, uh, and praise the Lord in. Amen. Amen. And, um, and a lot of things go out. Uh, this church has a community that we have to be, uh, do outreaches in. So there's a lot of things that, that money has to, to come in to help the community here as well. So not only the church itself, but go out into the community, help the community so. Okay, so these, uh, to me, are the, and it, there may be a few more that uh, we, we could add there, but these, to me, are the non-negotiables, okay? We have to have those things going on in our lives because this world system is bombarding us daily with a lot of stuff that's non-biblical, okay? I think we looked it up. It said uh, we're on our phones or social media, what, two and a half hours a day, something like that. And at an average, um, some people are on it a lot more than that. I mean, I see people walking down the street now, and they're, they're going across the street, and the traffic's coming in, and, and they're looking at their phone, looking at their phone, not looking at the traffic. Okay, so so social media has really occupied our minds. Uh, it's it's thought it's, uh, and I looked up this research. It's twelve thousand. Uh, to, I think it's 60,000 thoughts that go through our mind in the course of a day. That's a lot of thinking. And most of it is not biblical. Okay? It has to do with something in the world system. So we have to, we have to use that Romans 12, 12, 1 and 2. 12, 1 and 2. We have to renew our mind daily with the word of God. So that's why we have to be in the word of God because our minds are being bombarded with all kinds of worldly stuff. Okay. So the more that we get in the word, that kind of flushes all of that out. And, uh, and then we get a good, good start for the morning. Um, uh, Eddie and, and, the, and the mayor, I send them a devotional every day. Every single day. 
I think the mayor said last night, you're sending them to me at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but he said, he said it was okay. So, <laughs> And I did say I sent one last night too. But I make sure that, that they, they get that devotional every morning. To kick their, jump start their, their day and get that day going for them. Okay? And we can do the same thing. So the, 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 the issue is here, we can't rest on our salvation. Okay? We have to be active in our salvation. Okay? And it has to be constant because we're being bombarded with, with a non-biblical stuff all day long. So we have to stay fresh in the things of God. Okay? And then we got an enemy that fights us. We, have, we actually have three enemies that we battle. Get this off here. Okay, we battle, we battle the world system. We battle this world system. The Bible calls Satan the god of this world. He's the god of the system of this world. Okay? He set up this demonic system in the world. Right? So we battle that. That's an enemy of ours. Okay? We also battle our own flesh. We still have this sinful flesh hanging around. We may not be adhering to it, but it's still hanging around, waiting to get its opportunity to get back into your life. Okay? So, uh, and then we battle Satan, who works on our thought life. So these are the three enemies that we constantly battle. And we'll see something this afternoon that kind of reinforces that, uh, that thought life issue. But these, these enemies, we've already, we've already gotten the victory over, right? We've already gotten the victory. Calvary freed us so that we don't have to deal with those things any longer in our lives. Will they try to come into our life? Yes, they will, Okay. But we have the power now to resist. We don't have to be, have to be uh, in bondage to any of these things anymore. Okay? So when they come in, you're armed and dangerous. you got the word of God. And you can apply the word of God to any of those situations. And say, no, I'm not going to do that. Satan whispers some kind of crazy thought into your mind. No, devil, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing it. And you filter those thoughts through the word of God. And we'll talk more about that this afternoon. We take those thoughts and we filter them through God's word. And if they don't line up with God's word, we cast it out. Gone. Done. Okay. All right. So this is a, this is a good start for us today. We're talking about how-tos here. How to live this victorious life. And uh, Tony, give me, uh, I didn't have this scripture up there, Tony, but if you give me 2 Corinthians, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2 Peter 3 and verse 1. I want you guys to see that. I'm sorry I didn't give you that one, Tony, but uh, it might take you a little while to get it. 2 Peter 3 verse 1. Oh, here we go. Okay. Beloved, I now write to you this second e epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of rem reminder. Okay. That's probably not the one I want, but um, uh, the one I want is um, about life and godliness. God's given all things through life and godliness. We have all things given us through life and godliness. Um, so we ha we've already got the victory to, to walk in this, in, uh, in this world system. The victory has already been ours. Christ has already did all the hard work for us. Okay? So we, and he's given us the ability to, to live this life. We have the Holy Spirit. And uh, Bernie reminded me last night, hey, he didn't say nothing about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us to help us to walk this walk every day. And he, he's, he, he'll lead us and guide us into all truth. Yeah. And what is truth? Truth is the word of God. That's where our truth is. Okay. 
So he'll help us to, to walk this walk. But we have to take advantage of him. There's a lot of voices coming in into our, into our hearts and minds in the course of a day. But we've got to kind of blank that out and try to hear from, from God what he has to say to us. Okay, Tony, give me that again. You had it up there. I just saw it go away. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so I had the wrong scripture. I had the one, three. Okay. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, here, here's how that happens. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. How do we get the knowledge of him? We stay in the word of God. That's how we get the knowledge of him. And once we get the knowledge of him, then that first part of the, of, of the verse now becomes ours. We can walk in anything. We don't have to fear anything. Okay? Because the victory is already ours already. All we have to do is take it. It's ours. Okay? But we have to stay in the word of God. We have to stay active in the word of God. And that will help us to, to stay victorious and to walk this victorious life. We talked about, uh, I think last night we talked a little bit about trials. Uh, trials are there so that we may grow. Trials grow us. Uh, I think John 16, 33 says that uh, we are going to have trials in this life. We're going to go through things. This world is, is an imperfect world. We're going to have stuff happen to us in this world. But Christ will take us through those things. May not take us out of those things, but he'll take us through those things. Okay? And then we'll learn something in that trial. There's always something in that trial for us to learn. So that we can take that and we can use it. In a, and when, we, when the next trial comes up, and it will, and it will come up. Okay? Or we can help someone else who may be going through a similar trial that we just got out of. Okay? So there's always something to learn through trials. And the Bible tells us the joy in tribulation. Ooh, that's hard. It's hard sometimes when you're going through some difficult things to have joy. But the joy is that if I go through this thing, I'm maturing in the things of God. Yeah. Maturation, that's what God wants from us, okay? So uh, that's good. Okay, so these are the non-negotiables, okay? And they've got to be happening as much as we possibly can make it happen in our lives, okay? All right. Now... I'm going to get to more husband and wife stuff here in a minute. There's something that I call, uh, that Jimmy Evans calls, actually. He calls it the law of priority. The law of priority. How much time do we spend in certain things in our lives? Okay, let me get those up here. Okay. Our first thing on our priority list is God. He's number one. Okay, the second is our spouse. The third, our children, if we have any. Fourth being church. Fifth, extended family. Sixth, work and career. Seven, hobbies. and in other interest. Hobbies and other interests. When we lived here, we used to live in a golf community. And uh, <laughs> when, when I think about it, the golf community was number one for most of the people where we, where we lived. <laughs> that, was God, that was number one for them. They were up early in the morning, and that was like, four or five days a week that they're up in early in the morning going out to the golf course. Okay. But as believers, we can't have that. God has to be our number one. Okay. And uh, Tony, if you give me Matthew 6.33. 
There it is. There's your answer right there. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All what things? All the things that you're desiring to have, that God wants you to have, will be added unto you. But he has to be first in your life. Okay? And right under, right under God is your spouse. Your spouse has to be second in that pecking order. Okay? Um, Tony, I did give you a scripture for that too, didn't I? I think it was, uh, give me Ephesians 5.25. Okay? Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Okay, so there, there's a, 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 a priority order for the wife. Just as Christ loved the church, us the church, you are to love your spouse the way Christ loved the church. Okay? And then there's our children, if we have any. Uh, Tony, give me Psalm 127.3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Fruit of the womb. We may not, we may not think they're a, a heritage from the Lord sometimes, <laughs> but, but they are. Okay. They are. Okay. Um, of course, our church, church attendance. Uh, go, give me, uh, give me, um, give me Hebrews 10, 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offer you did not desire, but I, no, that's not the one I want. It's, um, it, it's talking about um, uh, not forsaking ourselves from, uh, from assembly. It, it is 10, but I don't know which one number it is. But uh, we, in this last days that we are right now, we are in the last days, folks. There's a lot of stuff going on in this world right now. We're moving us toward those last days, okay? Moving us toward the return of Christ to get his church. Okay, so we have to, uh, we have to be in, in fellowship, okay? We have to be in fellowship as much as possible to boost each other up, to lift each other's arms up. There's a lot of things going on right now in our world. And we have to make sure that we, we're on God's calendar and we know what, what God has, has uh, spoken in his word that the things that we're going to go through during this time that we're, we're in right now. Okay, okay now got it up there. Okay, not, there it is, 25, I'm sorry, I said five, right? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much that the more as you see the day approaching. What day approaching? The day approaching that we are right now, the last days, okay? So we're to be together in fellowship, helping each other, lifting up each other's arms, yeah. speaking words of encouragement, and words of affirmation to one another, okay? This is what's supposed to happen uh, in this day that we live, okay? All right, so um, then we next we go to our extended family. Uh, our extended family, whatever we can do for our extended family to help them uh, probably pray. We certainly have some extended family that we're praying for who are not yet saved. So we're, we're on our knees for them. We want to see our family make it, okay? So we're, we're helping them as well. And then work and career, and then uh, our hobbies and our interests, okay? So if God is not in his rightful place as number one, what he, he, if, he's there, if he's there, he wants to affect all these areas in a positive way. And he will affect all these areas in a positive way if he is number one. But many times, what do we have? We have children up here. We may have, uh, we may have our spouse up there. We may have work up there. Okay? If, if God is not in his rightful place, he cannot do what he wants to do in those other places in your life. Okay? And when you think about it, this is something you really need to remember. There's only two instances that require a vow. That's your vow to God and your vow to your spouse. Amen? Praise God. Okay. 
So that's kind of how things should look. Um, well, maybe, maybe a little variation, but that's kind of how things should look uh, pretty much in your priority order. Okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's 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 very good, Pastor Debbie. Yes, uh, that is. Uh, I and when we when you think about that, um, and you and I we talked about this, um, as much as we do outside of Christ, that stuff is not going to be worth anything when we stand before God. When when you stand before God and He opens up your treasure chest. And he looks down in there, and you, you got about this much for him. You're not, you, your reward's not going to, your reward, reward is going to be this, this much, okay? I want my chest to be full for God, all right? So as much as, as, much as we have to do these things, and we have to do them, we have to, we have, to have work to, to survive here. I have to find that extra time to give to the, to the Lord and do things for him because those are the things that are going to count when I stand before him. Okay? So we have to keep that in mind. We can't get caught up in, in any of this other stuff here. We can't get caught up in our jobs. Do the work. Do your, your work as unto the Lord. That's how we're to do our jobs. We do it as unto him. And then, we, and last night we talked about the, the, the roles of the husband and wife, and maybe we'll get to that again because uh, we may have a lot of uh, people who weren't here last night. We may get to that later. But um, um, we have to keep God first in our lives. Amen. We have to, okay? We have to be intentional about that because it's hard sometimes yeah. to, to fit that into our day. Yeah. But we have to do it. Like I send the guys that morning, when they wake up in the morning, they got... They pick their phone up. They got that scripture. They got it. They're looking at it. Okay? And then that starts their day out. And I give myself that same scripture, so I start my day out with that same scripture also. Okay? So this is how our day should look. All right? Now, we'll, we'll take some questions, but um, here's what I would like in our questions. Um, stay to the subject. Okay? We're not going to talk about uh, denominational issues like uh, some people go to church on Saturday, you know, and others go to church on Sunday. My son is, goes to a Messianic church. They go on Saturday. But he, he's, he's getting the word of God when he goes on Saturday. And, and Pastor Watts gave a great answer. He said, uh, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. So whatever day, day you go and you serve in God, he's Lord of the Sabbath. Okay. So um, we're not going to get into that. We're not going to get into denominational issues here. We're just going to stay on the subject, and, uh, and we're going to pass our mic around to uh, anyone uh, who may want to have something to say. Now, don't be afraid. We're good. We're all good here. And I have, we have, we have pastors in the house here beside me, okay, so they're going to, they're going to get involved also. Pa Pastor Nate. You guys got to go, okay, praise God. Love you guys, man. Praise the Lord. Pastor Nate, I got a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, you've got God at one and you got church at four. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk a little bit more the difference between the two? Uh, because, you know, there is a difference of God and church as far as, you know, their uh, priority wise. I'm a little hard of hearing, so. Is it Mike? Is it on? No, it's not you, okay. it's me. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you speak a little bit, bit, bit more about the priorities between God, which is one, right. and church, which is four? Okay, oh, good. I, I, okay, I got you. Okay, this is your personal relationship with God. That's more personal, okay? Here, we, we corporately come together and worship God, okay? So that, that, that's really the difference here, is your time that you give personally to God. In church, we come corporately 
before him and worship. Okay. Hopefully that's, that's your, a good enough answer. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and we have to have both of those. We have to have the time with God, and then we have to have that corporate worship. Yeah. I'll th- I tell you one thing we're finding in our church is that w- once uh, there's a prayer request, we get everybody in the church that we can involved in that prayer. Yeah. We have a little app on, on uh, church app on our phones, and we get everybody involved in that. We get everybody praying, and we're seeing great results from that. That corporate prayer, we're seeing wonderful results from that corporate prayer. Can I add one thing about uh, the church? And what I'm emphasizing here is that we're a family. Okay. We're not churchgoers. Yes. We don't come in and just find a chair and sit down, but we're a family. Now, the thing when you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, when you love God, you will take care of what is precious to him. Mm-hmm. And so he moves through the church. Mm-hmm, that's right. And so the, di- the difference, like Pastor Nate said, is God is your personal relationship, your walk with God. You got to have that mm-hmm. to really have an impact in that's the right. church. Mm-hmm. And too often, the congregations come and say, okay, let's see what pastors will mm-hmm. bring to the table. Yeah. Yeah. But reality is we all should yeah. be bringing something That's to the good. table. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every time we come, we should say, God, I want to come anointed. Yes, that's right. Because the anointing removes burdens and it destroys that's yokes. Right. Amen. But the church is where you have an opportunity. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stand up. The church is where we have an opportunity to partner with God Mm -hmm. and serve him. That's right. Amen. You talked about the treasure box. Yes. Mm -hmm. That treasure box, sometimes what we think is important, it's not biblical. And it's not important to God. And when you get to glory, you may think my box is going to be full and your box is almost empty because it wasn't Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? Seek him first. Seek him first. And in this house, we have been blessed with people that carry the load. We call them ministry assistants. Mm -hmm. They're not volunteers. They're ministry assistants. Mm -hmm. But the church is where God and other places too, but your home. Say home. Church is home. It's where God gives you an opportunity to grow in your gifts. He gives you an opportunity Mm -hmm. to learn the word, Mm -hmm. to serve him. And when you serve him, you're serving others. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And that's the Bible that we are esteeming Mm -hmm. others above ourselves. You got something you want to add? Come on. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Oh. I don't know if you want to give me the mic because I'll be locked down. Okay. (laughs) No, I I, I tie in a lot with this because um, back to what Pastor Debbie and Pastor Nate were saying, there is a universal vision. uh, There is the corporate vision, which will be the church. And then there is the personal vision. And the universal vision, when we think about it, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son and uh, go out into the hedges and highways and compel men to come. We all have that overall assignment. But there's an assignment that this church or my house, our church has to the region. That's good. And so every church is not going to have, like there, there's churches with deliverance ministry, there's churches with prophetic ministry, you know, just, just the whole thing. So it's important because we assist in carrying those things out. Yet I've, I've um, had maybe four, I would like to say physical, but I don't know how the Lord saw that, but four encounters with Jesus personally. Mm-hmm. And uh, he gave me a personal assignment mm-hmm. that nobody else can do but me. That's right. That's nobody good. else can accomplish okay. this but me. Okay. And it is my priority to get it done because he's given this to me to do. Mm-hmm. And so we can say, well, we all have the same assignment. Well, universally we do. 
but when we talk about the corporate vision, every church, though ultimately will go out into the hedges and highways, compel men to come, we have an assignment to the region. Uh, and, and that's what we do. But then there's a specific assignment that God has anointed you. Same anointing that's on Pastors Debbie and, and Pastor Jamie is on this house. And so that's an, there's an assignment and a grace that we've been given to get that done. And yet there is a specific assignment that God has to, to me personally. So I, I just wanted to kind of touch that. But, you know, my sons have that. And what, what the Lord always said to me was, if, if it's from me, you'll never accomplish it all in your lifetime. So you're going to have to hand it off. I remember we got the new church building. It was a really, really big building. And he said, I want you to get your sons. And he said, I want you to walk the perimeter uh, of this entire. And I'm like, Lord, that's the swamp back there. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, we have a pretty big setup. It's like maybe, you know, eight, ten acres or whatever. And so what I immediately thought about was myself and my spiritual sons. And the Lord said, I did not say your spiritual sons. I said you and your sons. Because it doesn't die with you. I, I, I've given it to you, but I've given it to, you know, them as an inheritance. So it just continues because the vision does not stop with me alone. The vision goes to your Amen. sons and your daughters, and it'll never be accomplished completely. Right. Amen, somebody. And that's how we know it's God, because if we could do it on our own, mm -hmm. we know then, wait a minute, I don't need God. If I'm praying for a microwave, I can, I can work yeah. a little hard and I get my microwave. <laughs> but what God has for me is so much bigger than that, that it takes him to accomplish yeah. the vision, even the personal vision that he's given me. But what makes it easier for me, back to what Pastor Nate and uh, Ronnie is saying, is it's important to know where the placement is. Because I look at this list, and I know pastors deal with this all the time. Number uh, three dictates to, to, to the upper. It dictates to the, to the parents. It dicta you know, so where my parents did not give me a choice. Y'all understand what I'm saying? My parents like, we are going to church. We're about to go worship God. <laughs> and it's like, no, I, I want to stay. No, no, we, we're going to, as long as you're under this house. And I, and I thank God for parents who loved me and loved us enough where I encountered God because we had parents that were willing to say no. Amen, Amen somebody. That's good. I, I can talk longer, but you know what no, I'm saying. Good. I think I'm tying that's in, good. trying to tie in what you said. Excellent. Amen. Excellent, Excellent. yeah, yeah. So the, the church should affect the community, okay? Not just uh, your, your, the people in the church itself. The church should affect the entire community, okay? And I usually say, this is your second home. Well, really your first home. Yeah. Now is your first home. Mm -hmm. And then God's given you your second home. Amen. Amen. So this is home. Somebody else had... Uh, yeah, Pastor Nate, you said that we battle three things, the world system, our own flesh, and so Satan, our thoughts. And, you know, I realized that the uh, best thing we like to fight is the world system. But uh, from what I know is Jesus said that give Caesar to what is Caesar's. So how do you figure that? I, I, you know, I... I, I I have, a bad, I have a bad ear over here, so I can't really hear all the time, so. Yeah, what Marcus was saying is that um, we live in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. Bible says give Caesar what is Caesar's. Yeah. We battle the world right. system. Mm -hmm. How do we differentiate between what is good to give to Caesar, what is evil are coming against us okay is, is that basically it Marcus? okay yeah. okay yeah um i i think uh the more we we mature as believers um and and we have the holy spirit i'm going back to bernie again we have the holy spirit living inside of us okay and, and he's here to lead us and guide us into all truth okay so if we we have to pay attention to what he says to us and what he's telling us if it's a situation or you take time, if you're not sure about something, you take time and you go before God 
and you ask him, Lord, is this something that I should be doing? And, and then you get, you, you hear that answer and, and you be, you're led by peace in your heart. Really, that's what you're led by. If you get the peace in your heart about something, then it's God. If you get a, a, a disruption and, and something says, no, I don't, I don't think I should be doing that. Don't go for it. Then that's the Holy Spirit telling you, no, that's not God. And the, the more you mature in the things of God, you'll get to know that voice. And you'll get to know, uh, when you hear it, you'll know that it's him speaking to you. Okay, he says, my sheep know my voice. So once you get to know him, then you'll know his voice. So the, uh, the object is to get more of him to mature so he can be more of a voice to you that you can understand. Make, make sense at all? Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to compromise mm -hmm. and, and you know right from wrong, yeah. too often we try to blend, yeah. okay, a little mm -hmm. bit of God, right. a little bit of the world. Yes. And with that is total confusion. That's right. That's good. Your thought life is totally mm -hmm. off. Good, Pastor. But the fact that I will not compromise mm -hmm. what you said, the non-negotiables. Yeah. I will not compromise right. my walk. Absolutely. Yeah. There's something, a word that the Lord has given me, uh, you know, when you're trying to make a decision. And because we have the world thinking and we have, as a Christian, biblical thinking it's sometimes it's, it's really hard mm -hmm. like you're saying uh we don't want to compromise mm -hmm. but it's it's really really tough to just okay i'm just going to do it mm -hmm. but he said to me um i was going through cancer and i kept saying do i do the radiation or do i do the chemo chemo i wasn't going to do i knew that uh but the radiation i didn't want to do that either but he said, if you do the right thing, you'll get the right result. Yeah. Now that's heavy. That is, that was beyond what my thinking is. So I knew that was God speaking to me about that. Yeah. So if I do the right thing, I'll get the right result. Mm -hmm. What is the right thing? Mm -hmm. That's another big mm -hmm. <laughs> question yeah. because you know, the doctors told me, uh, to begin with, this type of thing has to be taken care of with radiation. But then right after, they said, oh, and we have to add the chemo. And I was not going to do the chemo. Um, so what's right? So in my thinking was, okay, they first said radiation. That must be the right thing to do. And that's what I did. And in doing that and following that word that the Lord had given me, I was totally well. And it's been eight years, mm -hmm. yeah. eight years. Yeah. But by just following the thought, because mm -hmm. I, you know, you ask everybody, what would you do? Mm -hmm. What would you do? I was asking, what would you do? What yeah. do you want me right. to do? But it wasn't about anybody else. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about what anyone else thought. Mm -hmm. they, they were saying, I can't tell you. I don't know if it was mm -hmm. me, what I would do. Right. But I did what the Holy Spirit mentioned to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is you follow I peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I did peace. have peace after that. Because, uh, you know, you're mm -hmm. thinking, thinking, thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's something you don't play with. Mm -hmm. But I followed the yeah. word. And many times God will confirm his word. Yes. W with by you know someone else coming someone to else you and say hey yeah that's that's gets good that's good to go on that mm -hmm. you know um, I know the doctor mm -hmm. that was uh, in charge of, radi of radiation mm -hmm. she came she called you on a, on a Sunday. from her home <laughs> now doctors on don't do that they don't call <laughs> she called you from her home and she called you sweet pea right she said <laughs> and she said yeah. something I forgot what she told you she, she said, said uh, I I said are you really calling me on a Sunday? She said, I, my mind was on you. Holy I'm Spirit. Like, Holy I had the favor of God. And that was like another, okay. You know, because my doctor is for me. Her mind is on me. On a Sunday, I'm a special, doctor calls, calls you know, your house. Yeah. And I got a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Amen. Thanks, God. Go ahead, Pastor Ronnie. Mm -hmm. 
I, I was just going to back up what she said, just um, in growing up spiritually, um, you know, one part of that, because not everybody has the same setup, but, you know, the Bible said that in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. So a lot of ministry decisions, well, y'all know, I was, y'all were right there, a lot of you guys were right there uh, early on you know, where the Lord would give something and I would always just go to wise counsel. Mm -hmm. And uh, cause right. you just want to do the right thing. You didn't want to learn the hard way. Right. <laughs> you yeah. wanted to yeah. do the right stuff. And mm -hmm. then as we grew up in this thing and mm -hmm. you grew up more, you're not always going to be able to go to phone ministry. Mm -hmm. You just got to go to throne ministry. Mm -hmm. right. and, and that's just the way you got to do yeah. it. But back to what, uh, Veronica saying is seek peace and pursue it mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. the Bible says let the peace of God rule in your heart like right. an umpire that's right yeah. so when we think about an umpire yeah. he's able to tell us what what's what's safe. out of there right. and yeah. what's what's safe, safe. Out. yeah, yeah <laughs> it's safe uh, or, or mm -hmm. some counsel that's given it man that's out of there that's not yeah. that, that doesn't agree yeah. and it always kept me in a safe place and right. so that would be my encouragement because everything is may not always be black and white that's right Good. You know, but Good. we have the Spirit of the Lord that will mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. lead us in all Amen. truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good, Good word, Pastor Ron. Mm. Pastor Nate, um, on, on your list there, <clears throat> God, spouse, children, um, can you touch on the unbelieving spouse and the prodigal child? Oh, okay. <coughs> how, right. yeah. What is the how-tos on how to affect them right. for Jesus? Um, mm. You know, I usually go to, I think, 2 Peter 3. Um, where it talks about uh, that uh, the unbelieving spouse, and, I, and, and this works, and, and in our counseling, I even tell the guys this, it's, it says for the women, but it'll work for the men as well. You know, if, uh, if you have that unbelief, and we have a couple of people in our church that mm -hmm. I've told this to, and we've seen some change happen, right? The, the husband is, li was literally trying to tell the wife, hey, you don't have to go to church anymore, you can, you know, do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to church, okay? But, um, and that took, it took about a year yeah. for God to work on that situation. But he, st <laughs> he stood before the congregation and he, he said he was sorry. Yeah. When the Lord worked on him, he said, I'm sorry for what I said to my wife. He said, I, I love that woman. And she stayed with me. When I was a dummy and, and, and trying to run away from the Lord, she stayed with me. And he gave his testimony for our congregation. Right. And that was a blessing. So sometimes it takes a little stay, yeah. staying power yeah. to stay on your knees and continue yeah. to pray for that spouse yeah. until that spouse comes to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you, ha you have to be the, 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 the consummate prayer warrior, mm -hmm. the consummate woman of God. You, you, you obey the spouse. You know, you stay in line with God, of course, but you obey your spouse. You be the spouse, that all the spouses you can be to that, that uh, person, okay? And you stay in, in, in the things of God with that person. And, uh, and God will, I'm telling you, God will work in that situation. You know, you have to have some stay in power because God has his own time for things to, to happen, okay? So you just stay and do the things that you need to do and pray for that spouse and continue serving God and you're going to see a change right. in that situation. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs 31, it says for the woman to walk before your husband. You don't say anything. You do what you have to do. But you walk mm -hmm. before him and show him your godly mm -hmm. countenance. That goes for the man, too. Because mm -hmm. if the wife is not yeah. wanting to do the right thing, mm -hmm. you have to still walk your, do your mm -hmm. part. Honor, yeah. and honor goes That's for right. both. Mm -hmm. Honor your husband mm -hmm. if he's not yeah. wanting to That's do right. whatever, yeah. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. works both yeah. ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. How about the prodigal child mm. of, a, of any of any oh. age? The child. What? How do we okay. do spiritual warfare yeah. for yeah. our okay. prodigal child? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> same thing. Uh, same thing, uh, walk before him or her. Um, we, we believe in, and we, we've tried this with a number of people in our church, we, we have the old family meeting thing, yes. mm -hmm. which is probably most people don't have. Mm -hmm. we, we tell them to have that family meeting, mm -hmm. sit down. Sometimes children have things to say, but they, yeah. they can't yeah. 
say them to their parents because they're afraid for, you know, of retribution or whatever the parents, parents may punish them. But uh, they need to get to a place where the family can sit down and the family can begin to talk to each other, you know. I mean, we live in this fast, fast world and this fast food world where we don't sit at the table anymore to, to, to talk this, uh, things out with family members. I remember growing up, uh, Sunday, Sunday was a day when the family sat down after church and we sat down and we talked and we got things squared away. Okay. And the children were able to talk, you know, in that instance. So that way, when, when, the, when the child has something going on in, in their life that they need somebody to talk to, they won't go to somebody outside of the family. That's right. yeah. They'll feel comfortable enough to talk yeah. to, to the ma mother and uh, father, yeah. you know, and, and explain to that child. But family meetings, we, we preach family meetings to all, all the people that we, uh, that we counsel with that have family issues. Mm -hmm. To have that family meeting, get, get together and start talking. This, this fast food world that we live in, somebody's eating over here at McDonald's and somebody's eating somewhere else. You know, get together as a family, sit down, begin to start talking to each other and start communicating with one another. Okay. That's where uh, God made mother and father to take care of the children. You're supposed to speak in their life. You're supposed to know where they are. You're supposed to know what they're doing. And you're supposed mm -hmm. to know their heart. Yes. If you don't know their mm -hmm. heart, what can, you, what, what can mm -hmm. you tell them? How can you advise them? So mm -hmm. we do have to have that time with our children. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. That, was that good enough, Pastor Watts, for you? Oh, that was great. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. While she's coming, mm -hmm. this is something that I even faced with my brothers in, in growing up, mm -hmm. and they believe mm -hmm. bad behavior. Mm -hmm. And having the strength mm -hmm. as parents, family mm -hmm. members, sisters, mm -hmm. whatever, <clears throat> to say, no, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm praying for you, I'm standing in the gap for mm -hmm. you, but I know you're saying you need $10 mm -hmm. to go get lunch, yeah. mm -hmm. but I know you need $10 to go get drugs. Yeah, mm -hmm. got you. And so and too often, compassion mm -hmm. turns into enabling. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's, that's and it drains point. the family. Yes, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the boundaries, there has yeah. to be God yeah. boundaries. Yeah, 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 that's good. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Um, yeah. I think that, um, um, see, I had a thought there, Pastor Debbie, about that. I think that, um, I think I mentioned last night this, that uh, we, we need to, we need to know a lot of, about our children. Sometimes we just kind of let our children go and do what they want to do, and, and uh, they have friends that we, we don't even bother to check the families out or the friends that they're, they're hanging out with. You know, uh, ask the ask the hard questions. Hey, um, uh, let me. Uh, who are the, who are those people that you're hanging out with? You know, do, do their parents going to go to church? You know, um, are they are they Christian? Uh, so we have to be more inquisitive as with our children as to what their lives contains. You can't just let them run amok in your home. You have to be that consummate parent because you're responsible for them. God makes you responsible. We looked at that in 20, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child. When you're training up that child, you need to know everything about that child's life, as much as you can about them. Mm -hmm. But in this fast food uh, uh, world society that we live in, we're, we're going out to make money, we're doing this and we're doing all of that. Right. You know? and, and as we're doing that, and I mentioned last night, Satan is coming in the back door and going after your seed. Mm -hmm. So we have to be res more responsible about knowing what our children are doing. Yeah. Sit them down, have some time with them, and talk to them. Ask them, hey, you know, what, what's going on in your life? Right. Uh, go to school, if need be. Mm -hmm. Find out what's going on in school, how their grades are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, talk to their teachers. 
I remember we went to a PTA meeting one time, uh, and we were the only parents at the only PTA meeting. There. Right. Only one there. In a big school. They were we were glad the only parents us. at the PTA meeting. <laughs> they were glad to see us. They were like, who are you? And we're saying we're coming to the PTA meeting. And they was like, really? Really? And, and we were the only ones the whole time mm -hmm. that the meeting was supposed to happen. They had coffee and cake already set up for everyone to come in. Mm -hmm. And no one came. Parents, no one too came. busy. Too busy. Too busy doing other things. And not they, checking on their children. Mm -hmm. Here was an opportunity to talk to the teachers yes. of the children to find out what kind of astute they were. Mm -hmm. And I found out that night that my son had three, <laughs> three shop classes. And I was like, really? <laughs> three <laughs> shop classes? When does he do the other stuff? <laughs> so I was like, so what are we going to do about that? And why does he have three shops? And they were like, well, he didn't do this, 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 and on the, the testing. And I was like, I never knew that. Did something come home to tell me? Did you send a letter? Nothing. So we took care of that. Yeah. I went back yeah. to school. Yeah, we, we, pulled, out chil we pulled our children out of the public school system. Out. They said, you can't and, do that. And we, I said, yes, we put them into Christian schools at that time. We put them into Christian schools. Okay. But I could have and let now that they're both gone. serving the Lord. Yeah, if I didn't go to the meeting, I would never have known that. That's right. And I could not have changed my son's life. Because when we took him out of school, he was going to do all of those classes in, in Christian school. And he did. And some. And some. Mm -hmm. And he's a man of God today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them. My daughter's my pastor. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, because yeah, he my, took both of them out. Yeah, my son-in-law and my daughter, they're the pastors, pastors of, our church, of our church. So yeah. That's where we are right now. Pastor Ronnie? Yes, uh, thank you, Pastor Nate and Pastor mm -hmm. Ronnie. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to that list, the very first question about the difference between God and the church. Mm -hmm. And I am in agreement with my pastor here about being the church that plays your home, your spiritual home, where you grow, where you mm -hmm. can serve. Mm -hmm. But for the young ones and the young believers, we cannot replace the church with God. Right. He has to be. You know, sometimes the younger people, because yeah. I work a lot with them, mm -hmm. well, I went to church. That does not substitute your time with God, your prayer, your right. personal walk with mm -hmm. God. So, yes, you came to church. The pastor read two or three verses. That's not your personal walk with God. You need to get in the Word. Right. So you cannot substitute any of the other things yeah. with number one. That's good. And when we have number one in place, Amen. it affects everything else. And then we yeah. are fruitful. We don't bail out, right? Yeah. The first uh, situation where we're serving, well, I don't mm -hmm. want to do that anymore. No, then you're fruitful. You have, you know, roots. That's good. And you can give under the anointing of God. But yeah, that's me. we need God to be number one, and that's that is right. not your church attendance yeah or where you serve. That's good. It's your personal time with That's God. That's right. Praise God. That's good, Fred Wine. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. You know, you can, you can hide in, in a church. You can hide in there. You know? That's true. Uh, we've known somebody in particular mm -hmm. who's uh, not, he's, he's probably in heaven now. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he used to hide in church. He, he would get in a ministry and that would be his church. Wow. And, um, and he, was ha he was happy doing that. Yes, faithful, you know? very faithful. And, uh, and he did that all, all his, pretty much all his time, at, time with the Lord, mm -hmm. right? But he, he, did, he, he didn't read the word much. He didn't do anything, anything that we talked about that uh, negotiables, non-negotiables here. He didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. But he would come to church, he would get in his ministry, and that would be it. He would hide there. That's but there it. was a there was a, a root to that. Yeah, that's true. There and was then, a root to that. And, and, and we, we, we talked we about talked that, and we kind of that. uncovered a little bit yes. of the, what was going Why? on in his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was some hurts and some, uh, uh, came from an alcoholic family, mm -hmm. you know, and there was some issues going on with that, that he was still holding stuff mm -hmm. from uh, his father, you know, who, uh, who was an alcoholic too, mm -hmm. you know, so... Um, and I'm talking about something, and this, this is good to talk about. There's something called epigenetics. I don't know if anybody's ever heard about the epigenetics. Epigenetics is, uh, well, let me give you an example of what, what, it, what it is. When you go to your doctor's office 
and you're filling out doctor forms and they want to know about your, your family history, right? They want to know whether there was any diabetes in your family, any heart disease, any of that stuff. Well, epigenetics, uh, in the study of epigenetics, they found out if there's any behaviors going on in your parents, those behaviors are also transferable down to your children. Just like family diseases, epigenetics, beha epi epigenetic behaviors uh, can, ca can carry down into the next generation. Yeah. That's why we have, you know, alcoholics, alcohol runs through a family line. You know, you have a predisposition, alcohol runs through that line. Sometime it'll skip a generation and go to the next generation. So those are the things we have to, we have to probe and dig into that and find out, um, find out what that, that family history. We, everybody that comes to us, we do a family history. We do a family history on them. We find out what, they, what their family was all about. And we, we dig in there, we find traumas, we find hurt, we find this, uh, these various different things. And if those things are not healed and dealt with, unforgiveness, all of that, if those things are not healed and dealt with, they carry on into your adult life. Yes. And sometimes you only see the, the, the outside manifestation of it. You'll see anger, you'll see all kinds of different things like that. Mm -hmm. But, but if you look deeper, you'll find that there's something mm -hmm. underneath that. There's a wound and a hurt somewhere mm -hmm. that, that has to be healed. Mm -hmm. And that's the root of that, that, that behavior that you see. Okay. And a lot of times they, they don't know that what makes them do what they do. They, they, they can't explain it. But when we ask that question, it, it takes them all the way back. And that's the first thing that we ask. Yeah. Can you remember anything as far back as you can remember? The first trauma that you've had, the first hurt, um, anything negative. The first time you felt that negativeness, even as a, as, a, as a child. And believe me, if we're thinking right now and listening, we could all go right back to that first time that you had a hurt, somebody's hurt you, they, they, they called you names, and you felt less than, you know, even your parents, your friends, you know, a teacher. Mm -hmm. And those things last. Yeah. yeah. You know, and Satan keeps using that one thing over mm -hmm. and over and over throughout your whole life. So. And you can't understand why can't I do this? Why can't I, why do I? do the things I do? Why do I feel less than? It's because of that one thing, that one thing that was a, it set a mark on you. When you have these hurts and pains and they're not healed, then you, then you start looking for your own healing methods, yes. okay? Yes. And the healing methods that you look for are drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol, anything that you feel can give you a temporary fix mm -hmm. on that, that hurt and pain. But those are only temporary things, and, and they'll, they'll go away. And that hurt and pain will come back even stronger. Okay. I'm going to give you homework. <laughs> we do homework in, in, the, in our counseling. I want you, and this is just for you. Nobody has to know. I want you, when you go home, think about what we, we're talking about. And I want you to do um, a little reflecting. Think back to your childhood. And think back to the things that hurt you, and write them down. And it doesn't have to be all in one setting or anything like that, but every time, every so often, like if you get down and get a little depressed, take a pen and pencil and sit quietly and say, why do I feel this way? Whatever happened? And I want you to write down the date that you write it, and then the next time it comes up, write it down, and see how many times it keeps coming up. Keeps coming up, keeps coming up. And you'll, you'll get the idea from what we're talking about now, you'll understand mm -hmm. why. And Many even, I, it doesn't matter how old you are, because mm -hmm. it, it keeps mm -hmm. going yeah. until you say, okay, now I see what's happened, I know why it's happened, mm -hmm. and I don't have to live like that anymore because I, got, I have God. I don't have to live like that. He, he took all of that. And we know where it's coming from. We know that it's coming from Satan because he started it, he hurt you through someone else or whatever else, and it's, he's kept it going because he keeps bringing it up, bringing it up. 
the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. Pastor Nate, what is the key then to pulling down the stronghold, pulling up the roots? Because mm -hmm. everything has a root. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I shared this with Pastor Ron yesterday. Uh, the, the first, there, there's something called a cloak of denial. And that cloak of denial um, is just keeping, keep holding on to the, the and making excuses mm -hmm. for what you're doing. That's good. Everybody sees the cycle of, of, uh, of uh, dysfunction, mm -hmm. except you. You don't see the cycle of dysfunction. But when you finally recognize, see, through so, somebody tells you, hey, you know, why you keep doing that? You know, you, you, you went to counseling and you're, 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 uh, you, you're good for about six months, but now you're recycling. You're going back to that same stuff again. Mm -hmm. That means that, that that cloak of denial is still there. They haven't really released that cloak of denial. And that's really the start of healing is when that cloak of denial is released and the person comes and says, you know what, hey, I, I'm really, I'm hurting right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I keep doing that. But I want God. I want God. I want God to, to work in this this life of mine and make it different for me. So once that cloak of denial is broken, and the the heart and the and humility comes in, now we can get a healing uh, healing from that process. Okay. You have to get get tired of what you're tired of. <laughs> and and a lot of times these people have have burned all the bridges. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, nobody in the family wants anything to do with them because everybody's tried to help them by mm -hmm. enabling them. Right. And uh, they keep, you know, keep doing the same thing and doing, and everybody walks away. And now they got nobody, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a downhill destructive uh, process. Mm -hmm. If they keep going in that direction, they go downhill. But they have to have somebody, and that's, we, we stayed with a young man, and he lives in this, this, this city. He's our son at this point. Yeah, he, we spent eight <laughs> years in his life. Eight years. And, and I think about year seven is when we begin to see a change in his life. And now he has children who graduated yeah. from college, and, you know, he, him and his wife are together. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he did some real destructive stuff. Uh, he took the, took the children to the crack house and the, and the, the crack people were changing the diapers. <laughs> okay, just, just to let you in on a little bit of what was going on. The women in the crack house were changing the diapers for him. But, 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 but God, but God, God brought him out of that. Man. So, uh, oh, it's, thinking also that doesn't doesn't it have to do with a lot too with gener generational courses mm -hmm. well yeah and that's that's kind of what we're talking about um, but th th those generational curses can be broken at, 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 at any generation can break it okay. you have to know any that. generation can you break have it. to know yeah. that there are generational yeah. curses yeah. Yeah. yeah and you can ask the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, what, what's going on in my family? And talk to some of your family members. Yes. Yes. Okay, and if you see cycles in your family members, mm -hmm. then you know that there's something that you have to, you have to work on and get it out of, out of your life. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I have a question for uh, Pastor Debbie. Oh boy. <laughs> 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 you said the word reset, and it hits me hard. Um, how do you get stuck from always being on reset? Like you just continue and then you reset. You continue and you start to reset and you just feel like you live your whole life on reset, you know, over and over. How do you break that? Okay. I'm going to say number one, accountability mm -hmm. that you have. You can go, all right, me and Jonathan are going to have a conversation, okay? You're not here. But Jonathan, you're my kid. Doesn't matter where you go, where you worship, you're my kid. Amen. You're, you're, when God puts you in my heart, it's not because you worship here or whatever, you're just in my heart. Amen? But accountability, no, that's good. when you have accountability, that's a good word right there. It, it, 
account, you and me are going to talk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, accountability. Accountability is not something that you run That's from, good. you welcome it. That's good. Come on, say, we welcome it. Yeah. Because accountability says, brother, son, I'll lay my life down for you. I'll pray for you when you're, not that you are, but I'm just using this as a, an example. When you're off doing your own thing, it doesn't change my love and my concern for you. Accountability says, I will stand in the gap for you. Yeah. Accountability says, I'm, I'm not, mm -hmm. we're going to have our come to Jesus mm -hmm. moments when we need to have our come to Jesus moments. Amen? Mm -hmm. Accountability will love and protect, but it will give you wisdom, mm -hmm. and it will bring discernment. Mm -hmm. And often accountability knows the path you're getting ready to take before you even mm -hmm. know it. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom of God comes in. Mm -hmm. And I can say to you, Jonathan, move this relationship out of your life or stop doing this mm -hmm. or whatever. But it, see, it's your heart that says, Pastor Debbie, I know you only want the best for me. And so, Pastor Debbie, I'm teachable. I'm yielded. I want change. And when you, you, they say when you're tired of being tired, mm -hmm. you know, of the same thing. But when you really know somebody is standing in the gap for me. And they're not letting go. That's right. You know, and I'll just use him as an example. Not that he is, but this is our private conversation going on right now but Jonathan can go do whatever that doesn't change my assignment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my assignment is to be a spiritual mom mm -hmm. to you two same with Jamie you know God did it. it's a God thing and so when you find yourself in cycles of, of Victory, then you get stuck. Quickly say, okay, devil, there's power in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. That's right. And when the enemy, and we see, you know, the enemy tries to, to be so strategic. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says we are not ignorant of That's the enemy's device. devices. That's right. So as soon as you see your passions and, and your desires, all of us, we all get stuck. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as we see that we're starting to pick, pick something back up again or start having a mindset that Jesus delivered us from, the Bible says whom the Son set okay. free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's a work of the Holy Ghost. But for you, I'm just using you as an example, because, see, we get stuck in the now. Mm -hmm. But if you are able to say, you've had so many words prophesied over you. It's like every time mm -hmm. a minister came here, they prophesied to Jonathan. And so, but you say, hey, I see so much bigger. I see so much better than this little trap that the enemy is trying. Because that trap is to steal the future that God has for you. But the key for me, I think, is accountability and who you associate with. Mm -hmm. You know, God, we say God number one, but Christian relationships are so important. And just to know, hey, find somebody that you admire, a, a mentor. I say that to all of us. Find someone that we admire and say, okay, God, if, they, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. Amen. And you have a great call on your life. Okay. How are we doing? How are we doing? Yeah, that's the key, just having God time. 
Amen. Amen. Speaking of time, <laughs> it's lunchtime. <laughs> and um, this has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a wonderful lunch, and then we're going to come back and, and wrap it up. But what I'm really appreciating so much, uh, you guys, is the practicality of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. it, this is the how-tos, and that's what works. Um, uh, let me pray over the food. What we'll do is we'll go out. Uh, they have some tents set up outside by the patio, and uh, the meals will be prepared out there. It's going to be fantastic. So let's pray and ask God's blessing on the food. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this food to our body, oh and we thank you for the hands that have prepared it. Bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless you. God. Just head straight on out to the lobby. Uh, direct yourself over that way. I think you'll see the